Folks, we are over halfway there. The work week and the build up to the game of the week. It's a late night, Woody Wednesday. Snap judgments. Love it. They are presented by Byers Auto, and we are getting set for the Saturday night showdown. Ohio State and Notre Dame. That's Bill Landis, and I am Austin Ward. A handful of Buckeyes out to talk about what could be a very physical showdown, Bill. Yeah, you know, it's weird. Like, it doesn't, I'm, I'm not trying to say it does not feel like a big game. But I half expected to come in here and like listen to a bunch of guys who like seemed a little on edge and they seem rather calm and confident about this game, which I actually think is a good thing. I don't know. How, how did you kind of take in the vibe? Yeah, I think that some of the tightness that we noticed last year in the big games, specifically the game, you know, we said, well, it's a tight buttoned up team, they're taking it really serious and they're focusing on that intensity. Well, that approach came from the top down, from the head coach down, and I don't think that it worked. It was out of character for Ryan Day. I think it made the players seem tighter. There wasn't really any of that from Marvin Harrison, Kyle McCord, Cade Stover, Tyleek Williams, Sonny Styles, these guys that talked uh, in this building tonight. Like Very different from the way that they handled it a year ago. Now, what does that mean on Saturday night? I don't know. As Berm would say, Lucy goosey and and bring in the juicy like that's sort of what you're hoping for you hope that that's the way that it translates on saturday night but uh compared to the way that ohio state got ready and talked for big games it's very different very different but i like i said i do i do think it's good i think that's the the mindset they need to take on i, I to your point i do not think the the other way of going about your business served them well last year they won some games i think you know despite that but i, I think Approaching it this way gives Ohio State its best chance of coming out and hitting Notre Dame early and playing loose and aggressive. And Kyle McCord was asked a little bit about that. He was asked about the Georgia game because Kyle made reference to it in the offseason when we were asking him, about like, hey, can you run? And he's like, well, I saw the Georgia game, and, and I think you have to do that in those kind of games. And he didn't say it in those exact words again tonight, but I think he, he did acknowledge that they are approaching this in a, in a similar fashion. They're not going to go into it and – Try to play ball control early. Like, at least I, I don't. I don't think they are. You know, if I'm if I'm wrong when the game starts on Saturday, I guess that's fine. But from everything we've heard so far this week, I think I'd be surprised if they came out that way. But you mentioned before we came into the Woody uh, earlier on Wednesday night that how much do you think Kyle McCord is going to run? You asked me that, and it's like spitballing around some answers. And the number of times that he watched the Peach Bowl and his reference the way that CJ Stroud played in that game, like I think that Kyle McCord expects that he's going to have to do it a couple of times. That's not a a prediction, a projection, the, you're going to do what the defense dictates. But, you know, I I think what we've seen through spring practice and in training camp and even in, you know, a couple scramble situations so far through the first three games that Kyle McCord is willing and able to do those things. Now, yep. what again, what does that actually translate to a number of times, a number of carries on, on Saturday night? My guess was like I told you, I think, I think maybe Kyle McCord would scramble and get two first downs and extend two drives that way. I don't know that the design stuff is going to be there because he might have he might have lost his his rushing license at Indiana, but <laughs> and he hasn't earned enough points back for that. But I, you know, this is a game where that could very well transpire, especially if Notre Dame has opportunities where they may get get home defensively. Yeah, I think those will happen. I, I think we'll we'll talk about Ohio State's offensive line, I guess, in a second. But but I I think that is an area probably where Notre Dame sees some vulnerabilities in Ohio State, and they're going to try to exploit them and get after Kyle a little bit. It's going to be a really good test, I think, for of of his resolve, of his playmaking ability, of of his ability to stay calm and collected. Like everything everyone says about him, I think is true, and I actually think is very important in this game. But but it'll be put to the test, I think, on the road against a defense that is going to get after them. Like Al Golden, the defensive coordinator for Notre Dame, has has blitzed quite a bit this year. I, I see no reason why he wouldn't try to do that against Ohio State. So Kyle's going to have to make some plays. He, he not have to run to your like runs past the line of scrimmage and runs behind the line of scrimmage to extend plays are, are two different things, but it's using your legs nonetheless. And I do think Kyle will have to do a little, little bit more of that this week. All right. So what did you glean from the offensive line conversation, Bill? So we talked to Donovan Jackson. Um, we were supposed to talk to Josh Simmons. That that did not come to fruition. But it's nice to hear from Donovan because he's probably – he and Josh Fryer both are, are, are the two leaders up there in terms of being the most vocal. So it was good to have at least one of those spokesperson – spokespeople? Spokespeople. Spokespeople. Uh, spokes dudes. Spokes bucks. Yeah. For for that group. Um you know, I, I don't. I don't think they're making too much of how well they played last weekend against Western Kentucky, and I think that's a good thing. Like, you don't. I don't think that's the kind of game where, especially in the offensive line, where you play well and just suddenly think, "Oh, we're, we're good. We got it all fixed." But I do think they've built week by week, gotten better at the communication. 
gotten identified in the run game a little bit better. It's still not perfect. I think the protection has been encouraging really through all three games. I know they took the sack fumble against Western Kentucky, but that was, I think, more the byproduct of having a, a bad call against a blitz look from, from Western Kentucky than anything else. Um, I do think they've protected Kyle and Devin Brown both fairly well, and, and you're going to need that in this game. So they will be tested for all the reasons I, I, I just said. I am curious to see how efficient they can be running the ball. I do, I do still think that's a lingering question for this group, but I think they are building confidence, and that's really all you can ask for, I think, at this point in the season. Yeah, it, it, it's certainly not a team to go back to you know, the confidence and the way that they answered questions that seems unsure of itself or right. what it can do. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you you talk to Marvin Harrison, that's certainly going to be very different. He, he is supremely confident in all situations that he's going to be faced with. But even when you talk to Donovan Jackson or Travion Henderson about the run game, I, don't, I think everyone, all of them would acknowledge that it could be more efficient than it has been through the two fir- first two games specifically. And even there were opportunities on Saturday where it may have been even better than it was. Not that there was any issues with it, but again, that's grading on a scale for Western Kentucky and Notre Dame on the road is a different animal entirely, but there's not, and that was the sense that I had for the first two weeks as well. Like no one was throwing up their hands and be like, gosh, this really isn't up to the standard here and it'll never get there. I like, they never, they didn't have any crisis of confidence over that. And I know that people have, you know, maybe I've made too much of specific for me about the preseason buildup and those things. And, and, and that's fair to, you know, expect them to do it more and, and execute better against overmatched competition. But this group and the, the number of talented players, the depth of the talent, like all of them know that over time, they're going to be able to win games and assert themselves, whether that's run game, whether that's pass rush, whether that's the passing attack, Kyle McCord, any, like every unit feels that way. And I think that now they're starting to, they know that Saturday night is an opportunity for that potential to actually matter to other people. Yeah, I think it helps them. It helps the entirety of the offense, I think, but but especially the people involved in the run game, that they have at least been able to be explosive while they're still trying to find better efficiency. Because I think for much of last year, they were neither efficient nor explosive. Um, and, and that's where I think like a Trevion Henderson, who also spoke tonight, really helps this offense and then you know we were doug and i were doing kings of columbus earlier on wednesday we're answering questions about like is travion a reliable every down back do they need to maybe ride my or trip train them and that physicality and efficiency a little more and like I, th- I think it's a fair question but that the explosive element that travion gives you with this offense just opens up so much more for you it allows you to be right sometimes when you're wrong like he can he can just make something out of nothing i think and um he feels that too like you you can pick up on his confidence he's you know, I, I think he's probably a, even a, even a, a notch or two above where he was as a freshman, where he was riding high a little bit for much of that season because he was playing so well. I think the fact that he's gotten some long hits the last couple of games in the run game has given him a lot of confidence, but also shown the offensive line in particular kind of what they can be when everything's hitting the right way. How about on the defensive line? Tyleek Williams is sort of the uh, spokesman for that. He, I, It was interesting. He said that he did not feel like the knee was still 100%, and that's – I think a fascinating juxtaposition between the heaviest snap count volume of his career with also still maybe not being 100%. Like he's clearly, in my mind, he's clearly playing the best football of his career. Yeah, no doubt. The offseason attention to detail seems like it's paying off for him. And I, I had questions about that early in camp. They, his body did not look like it had transformed in the way that many others, but he is naturally a bigger defensive tackle. So I, I may have made too much of that and the knee injury because I was skeptical if he could be someone that you would play the highest volume of snaps at defensive tackle. And so far, he's given them no reason not to, other than a bad touchdown celebration. I love the touchdown celebration. You don't <laughs> like it? I thought that was awesome. Um, I apologize. I keep checking my phone because I think Berm's sending me messages about like something wrong with the video. It's just Doug sending texts because he can't <laughs> stop sending them. The number's on the bottom of the screen. Sign up. Uh, I, it's interesting, yeah, that he said that about his knee. I, I guess like the, the extra workload for him in games is probably making up for lost time that he didn't get in camp, right? You want to build up, I think, a little bit of game shape th- through the games themselves to make sure he can play a big workload against Notre Dame, and that's a balance there. Like he, he and Mike Hall are going to have to be, I think, Ohio State's best players, at least on defense on Saturday night, because if you look at how Notre Dame's constructed, 
with their offensive line. Their, their tackles are very good. Their left tackle is, is excellent and perhaps the best in the country. But I do think it's a little soft in the middle of that, that offensive line sometimes, especially like the right guard position. I think that like even Notre Dame themselves, I think if they were honest, they would say they're a little concerned about that. We saw what Mike Hall did against his team last year. If he can get after it in the same in the same way and, and Ty Lee can kind of pile on top of that with the way that he's been playing lately, perhaps even take that up to another level. I, I do think that that tandem can almost take over this game and, and make it more comfortable for Ohio State. Did you and Doug plan that as like a way to pitch the pass? Absolutely like, not. No, I just I, I realized guys, that I kept looking at my phone and I wanted to explain what was happening. You guys are just ex- in my pocket. expert marketers. Like yeah. You should probably go help buyers off. No, I'm not. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, my takeaway from the defensive line was about some extra work. So we talk a lot of Woody Wednesday nights about the Monarch machine. And look, oh gosh, Marvin Harrison is right there behind us right now. Uh, defensive ends doing a little extra catching to work on their hands. And that was with two tennis balls, Bill. And I asked yeah. Mitchell Melton. So Mitchell Melton, Caden Curry, and JT to him all down there in the end zone after practice for quite a while. It's to work on some hand placement and hand eye coordination. So throwing. You're working on your defensive line, your pass moves, and you, you catch two tennis balls, uh, or you try to catch two tennis balls. I'm not sure how high the success rate was for all three of them. I don't think I could do that. But it doesn't look very <laughs> easy, but it is something that JT Tuimolowal brought to that group. He had two guys doing it with him, bring them along, sort of like Marvin Harrison and Mecca Buka and, and Xavier Johnson have done with the Monarch. Uh, they were doing that for quite some time. So... Interesting to see. Mitchell Mountain told me that it, it was only the second time that he had ever done it. So it is a new thing, at least for him. It's cool to see guys doing stuff like that, like taking the initiative and finding different ways to, to work on their craft. I'm sure, like, I, I don't know how much JT listens to the echo chamber of, of Ohio State fans and Ohio State media, but I'm sure he's a guy who wants to, you know, do everything he can, make sure he's looking for every extra inch to, to be the defensive end that I think a lot of people want him to be. So I think that's a sign of that. I think the... The thing that's often maybe missed is that when they, whether they listen to it or not, the criticism, whether that's us or anybody else, like there's all of these people that come to Ohio State are so driven. Like, yeah, if JT to a Moloa doesn't have a sack, like I guarantee you he's more upset than anybody else. Yeah. Like these guys are s- such, uh, so highly motivated that they don't really need that. And it doesn't, it doesn't drive them. I think that when you sit down and, and talk to them and ask them, they would say, Yes, this isn't what they expected for the first three weeks. That's not, they all purposefully don't say what their goals are so mm-hmm. that we don't have to hold them to that. But I, I guarantee you, statistically, that's not what JT, Jack Sawyer, uh, Mike Hall, maybe Tyler Williams, but like he'd be the exception. I guarantee you they all wanted more. They expected more. And to your point, like are they, they're going to have to be better on Saturday for all the reasons that we talked about with Sam Hartman and giving him time like this for it being a matchup game. And, and whether, you know, Berm's right about it not being one or, or not, like you do have to win in the trenches. Yep. And that's Ohio State has maybe not done that as much on the defensive line as they've wanted to. And this is an opportunity to erase that as a talking point. It definitely is. And and there's fun, like individual matchups within that, too. Like if you're a NFL draft person, you want to watch JT and Joe Walt go at it as, as much as they can or as often as that happens. Um I think like Blake Fisher, the other tackles, definitely an NFL guy as well. Um, maybe not the first round talent that Joe Alt is, but but very good in his own right. So, sorry, I'm fighting back a sneeze. When Jack Sawyer, uh, <laughs> when Jack Sawyer goes up against him, I, I think that's worthwhile to watch as well. Both those guys, I think, like JT and Jack, I think are the guys that are getting the the. I don't even want to call it criticism. It's just like, hey, we thought this would would look a little better because I think they've actually played okay. They just don't have the sacks. Um, but I, I think they both should be feeling pretty confident coming off of last week because I, I thought they both played great last week. Jack in particular, I thought it was the, the best he's played. So hopefully for Ohio State, they can build off of that and, and show up with South Bend and, and play the best ball they played. Yeah, there may well be some nitpicking that's going on with that, but that's, you know, when you, when the standard is the standard and you're trying to win a national championship, like if you're the part that's maybe not at a national championship level, then you're going to get talked about more. Yeah. Is it a, a fair criticism? I think you know, maybe reasonable minds could disagree about that, but it doesn't matter because all they're trying to do is beat Notre Dame on Saturday night. So. Yeah, comes with the territory at a place like Ohio State. That's right. They know what they're getting. That's right. Um, anything else stand out to you? Mm, Lincoln Keenholz was uh, wearing the Sam Hartman jersey. What's it mean? It means he's playing for Notre Dame. No, <laughs> uh, I think it's like, I, I, maybe I mentioned this before, but I think 
having a, a kid like that who's pretty athletic as your scout team quarterback is a tremendous luxury for Ohio State that I think very few pro- programs, are, honestly, if, if any, have. Um, and Ohio State's had that a couple of different times, both in Ryan Day's tenure and, and prior to Ryan Day being here. Um, so I just think it's interesting. I think it gives them a really good look when you're trying to prepare for um, – a difficult challenge playing a guy like Sam Hartman. I kind of would have thought that you'd want someone who'd been in college for a minimum of six years to handle that role if you've got him on your roster. Like, let, yeah. tr- let Tristan Jebbia go. No, if, no offense to Tristan Jebbia. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. I'm just not. I'm not keen to his to his movement skills. So I think maybe <laughs> Sam, or uh, Lincoln Keenholz might give you a little more there. Okay, fair enough. No offense. It's too late. It's on the board. Respect your elders. Marcus Freeman watches this show, so he does. You Hi, Marcus. Made a, you made a big mistake. Sorry. I'm going to text him right now. <laughs> I'm going to streamline the process <laughs> because I just want to stir the pot. I want a huge great, huge game. I want people fired up. I want people throwing punches. No, nah, maybe yeah, not. That's, that's a little too far. That's yeah. We'll let uh, Coach Prime handle that stuff over there in Boulder. Uh, whatever. Thanks for joining us for Snap Judgments. It is a Wednesday version in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center and is brought to you by Byers Auto. Looking for a new or used car that is the best place to go buy one, I promise you. Uh, That is Bill Landis. I'm Austin Ward. Snap judgments are a wrap. We'll talk to you tomorrow.